Hi, my name is Ben Eggleston. Welcome to Eggleston on Guitar, and we're here in the Tone Loft. Uh, if you just get this out of the way, if you'd like to see more of this, then please subscribe, drop a like, give me a follow. It would all help massively. So this is the first upload on the channel, and it's coming in two parts. Uh, and this is Guitar Secrets Part One. Now these aren't global guitar secrets regarding the secrets of the mystics of the fretboard or tone or anything. These are Ben's guitar secrets, mine. Um, and because we're super early on in the channel, I figured that we would get them out of the way now because, frankly, they're a little bit embarrassing. Part one uh, is basically I can't read, write, or understand or speak musician uh, or musician, as I like to call it. Um, I don't know anything about reading music. Uh, I'm, I'm unable to write it down um, I'm not very good at talking about it in in more than kind of very very basic terms and I've spent a lot of years in a lot of different bands up and down the country playing gigs it hasn't stopped me doing that but I've got to be honest uh, it has made life difficult at times so let's talk about to what extent my idiocy ranges um, I do I do understand some basics, you know, so I understand the difference between a, a major and a minor. Um, not because I understand how those chords are built up and what the the number for the the minor note is. I know the difference in tonality uh, and I know the difference in vibe and feel that it gives, but I, I can't really speak too much more in depth about that um the the most embarrassing thing for me that that really I, I feel like kind of everybody bar me knows about it and this is bearing in mind i've been playing for like 35 years when it comes to things like the uh the pentatonic box so i'll freely admit that the pentatonic box is somewhere i love to play uh and it's something that i use a lot um but I'm also aware that each box has its name, so to speak. So let's do this in the, the key of E. Um, switch pickups on the old neck here. In E, I understand that you've got, I, don't, I know what an octave is as well, so you've got E, and then you've got E up here, at the 12th. And I understand that from this one, that's a repeat of I get that and I understand how one moves up to the other so how you get up work your way up an octave through the pentatonic shapes Kind of that despite the sucky playing the thing i don't know and which i feel like i should learn is i understand that each of these areas have got names like box one box two box three and this is what i mean when i say i can't really speak musician because if somebody tries to um relate that back to me obviously um music and music theory is just a way of communication um between musicians I, I get that and I understand that um, and it's so that they can quickly and easily communicate these things to each other so if somebody shouted to me hey man we're gonna do a riff it's over in it's pentatonic it's easy so immediately I'm thinking oh thank god uh, it's over in box three I'm like guy yeah I don't actually what what where where is it I have to see it to understand it I know the shape I've learnt I've spent the time and learnt the shape um, but I don't know I honestly don't know the answer to I couldn't tell you which one box three is that seems true following on from that when I say that I've learnt the the pentatonic shapes and the shapes of the scales I did actually go ahead and many years ago learn this the, you know the standard <laughs> learnt the the major scale uh, learnt it in a minor <laughs> So I've got 
some of those under my belt as well and and in various different places um again i know i know as much that the when you change some of the shapes um for the uh, the major and the minor scales they start to get into the modes and i know some of the names of the modes like the mixolydian the ionian i i know what those names are but don't let that fool you into thinking that I understand what they mean. So, if, so again, with the, the music theory communication part of it, if somebody shouts, oh, it's Ionian, I'm like, what? I don't know what that is. Um, all of this stuff is, is stuff that, over the years, it's not stopped me from doing what I want to be able to do and, and to get up on stage and play or to get in the recording studio and record. It hasn't really stopped that. But it definitely hasn't helped. Now, if I was going to give any advice, um, which, look at me, I'm not really in a position to give advice. But from my experience, it would be very, very handy to learn all of the notes across all of the frets. Because, again, I don't know that. I, could, I can figure it out. I can figure out that I know that that's an A. No, it's not an A to D. See, I don't know off the top of my head. I can figure out what it is, um, but I can't just instantly name each one either. Again, hasn't stopped me, but it would be helpful to know. Um, and I'm going to be a complete hypocrite and also state that I ain't bothering learning all this now. If I'd have just started, this is my advice for people who are just starting on their journey of guitar, it, I would like to know it, it would be handy. So how have I kind of traversed my way around this? When I tell you that a lot of my stuff is done through feel and vibe, um, and a lot of it I relate to other players. Um, for example, when you get into deeper, uh, not deeper music theory, but when you, you get into less commonly used tonalities and less commonly used stuff, uh, for example, you've got things like Diminished. Well, I know the name Diminished, just the same as I know some of the names of the modes. But this is one that I can actually tell you what the vibe of Diminished is. And I can tell you my story as how I link those two together and why I remember them. Those are from... I, I relate Diminished to a player, uh, Ingve Malmsteen, an old 80s player. I'm sure you've... What am I doing? I'm on YouTube telling guitarists about Ingve. I'm sure you've heard of Ingve. If you haven't, Go find out about him. Um, but it's it's that kind of... I relate it to being that extra kind of spice in amongst the uh, the minor scale. Um, and I, I learnt what it was through this. kind of Ingve thing there. So this I, I know that this is diminished. Um I think no, it's augmented. See, I still get confused. But I understand that in the key of A, A minor, you've got a diminished run right about here. I learnt that one from Ingve. Uh, and I also realised that you can walk it down in the kind of higher register. And it's a flavour. Um, and that's the way that I see something like diminished. Um, it's, it's, not, it's not the correct way of doing it. I appreciate that. I appreciate that you should know... The, like the numbers and the values of the notes and how they relate to the A minor scale uh, but unfortunately I don't I just know that it's a flavour that if you're kind of if you're playing in that, that sort of minor key with that sort of a vibe
I know that that fits in with A minor. So flipping over from minor to major, I, I understand the kind of... <laughs> The, that's the three notes per string scale that you kind of you learn for the 80 shred subscribe we'll get deeper into three notes per string and stuff like that and I can teach you the kind of feels and the vibes of it uh, but I also know that around that's the wrong card I know that you've got your, your kind of major feels around there I'm more used to it up here in, for, in the key of A Because it feels the same shape as uh, an A minor. But I can't tell you why. I know that it's the same shape and if you move it over here it puts it into major. understand that and I get that and but again can't tell you why so if we're playing in in I can have I can have a band shout a key at me and I can stay within that key because I know the sounds of you, you, everybody knows when they hit a bum note obviously don't they or when they're playing sli slightly out of key you only need to have been playing for like a certain period of time if you've been playing for a year or so you'll be able to hear yourself that you've made a mistake there I get that part but um I can't just it's hard for me to follow chord changes. So if they put like the chord changes down on a piece of paper for something I'd never heard or never played before, and they just went, there you go, Ben, you can follow that through. I would need, I'd have no frame of reference. Whereas in reality, your frame of reference should be everything written down for you. That doesn't really work for me. I, I've, I've learned from ear and from feel and from relating to different types of music and different types of players. I suppose what I'm saying is that's not necessarily a bad, bad thing. And you, as I say, you can survive and you can get through and you can play. It's it's fine. It's not going to stop you from enjoying the guitar. But it doesn't necessarily make your life easy. You've got to be able to work pretty fast on the fly. Uh, and especially if you kind of, if, you, if you're doing it with a, a rehearsal with a band or you're sitting in with a band and they they give you a quick, quick run through but let's say they've only given you the intro and the and the verse and the, and those are in either major or something that you can skirt around in pentatonic with fine no worries but guess what what happens if the middle eight sw swaps to a minor key or something you need to be able to adapt and move really really quickly and be able to fit that in and gracefully and tonality and some in a musical way fit that into a, a, a minor key and that takes years and years and years of practice. Whereas, if you could just read it from the sheet, you could just know it was coming and be prepared. So that's what I mean by it doesn't make life any easier. Anyway, that is the first part of my admission to Ben's Guitar Secrets. Uh, there is a part two. Subscribe and stay tuned and you'll catch that one too.